So we were on the water cooler at work the other day, I was talking to a guy about a new rifle he bought. He bought a Henry Lever Action 4570 with a threaded barrel. And he was saying he wanted to get the Dead Air 46M for his 4570, which is the same suppressor that I would order for my 338 Lapua Magnum. The previous topic was a bunch of us talking about making a trust for our suppressors so that we could share. And then he asked if he'd be able to use that oversized 46M on his 308. He has a hunting rifle and a battle rifle, both in 308. I said, more than likely, yes. Suppressors come with end caps. So you can use a 30 cal suppressor on all the 30 cals, on 6.5 Creedmoors, on 243 Winchester, on 5.56, and you can use it with or without an end cap. But they do make 6.5 Creedmoor end caps, 5.56 end caps. And then we got onto the topic of, do you lose any suppression? So that leads me to today's video. We're gonna take this 30 caliber suppressor and I'm gonna shoot a 308 unsuppressed. I'm gonna shoot the 308 with a suppressor and see how much sound deadening you're actually getting with the suppressor. And then I'm gonna shoot a 6.5 Creedmoor unsuppressed. I'm gonna shoot the 6.5 Creedmoor with my 30 cal. And then I'm gonna change the end cap on the 6.5 Creedmoor and see how much of a difference you get just by putting it the right size end cap on. Uh, the oversized end cap will provide some noise deadening, but the real question is, does the end cap actually matter? You're not changing the baffles or anything else, you're just changing the end cap. So we were curious if that'll actually provide any sound deadening. And then we're gonna do the same thing with a 5.56. Five, we're gonna shoot the 5.56 five, unsuppressed. We're gonna shoot the 5.56 five, suppressed with a 30 cal, with a 6.5 Creedmoor cap, and with a 5.56 five, end cap. And then we're gonna shoot it with a 5.56 five, suppressor. And then we'll look at the stats and see if you have multiple calibers, is it okay just to go with a single? Or based on the numbers, is it better to get caliber specific suppressors? I know for a fact, this dead air Sandman will provide some suppression to the 5.56. And I won't be able to answer the question for you, but is it worth it to spend another $800 plus a tax stamp to get a 5.56 specific or a 6.5 Creedmoor specific or whatever the case may be? So we're gonna put a little science in the numbers. I'll provide you the data sheets on how much suppression each scenario offers and that way, if you're looking at buying one or two suppressors or three, it'll help you make a decision on whether or not it's worth it to buy a second suppressor or just go with the biggest suppressor you need and maybe buy end caps. While we're using the suppressor, I finally bought a suppressor cover from Coltac. So we're gonna test this out today too. So I did say this would be scientific. So I bought this here Eric Hill sound level meter. Meter off of Amazon, had 4.7 stars. Uh, right around 100 bucks. So hopefully it's accurate. It's constant, so we'll use the min and max, and we'll reset the max every time we shoot. In the name of science, we're gonna go ahead and start this party off with 5.56 unsuppressed. For the test, we'll be using a Sig Sauer M400 16 inch barrel. 55 grain, 5.56, not 2.23. And this is the factory flash hider that came on the rifle. So for every shot we take, We'll do a set of three uh, and average those out. So 96.8. 96.8. 96.8. Eighty-eight point four. Right, so we will start out with the actual five-five-six silence or suppressor. All right, unsuppressed. We were at eighty-eight to ninety-six. We'll see what a suppressor actually does for us. Eighty-five point six. 78.3 78.8 Now in order to complete this science project 
I had to go out and buy a muzzle brake for the Sandman. Science projects are never cheap. I spent about $300 buying end caps and muzzle brakes, but in the name of science, right? All right, this will be 5.56 five, suppressed with a 30 cal suppressor. Seventy five, seventy three point six, seventy eight point four. We're now going to swap the three oh eight for the six point five end cap. So this is a five five six with a thirty cal suppressor with a 6.5 end cap. All right, last test with the 5.56 will be a 30 cal suppressor with a 5.56 end cap. 70 .5. 71.4. 83.2. So I'll go back and I'll get all the averages and put it on the screen for the 5.56 five, unsuppressed with the proper suppressor, 30 cal suppressor, 30 cal with a 6.5, and 30 cal with a 5.56 five, front end cap. Now I am completely done with this 5.56 five, end cap. I'm not going to shoot any more 5.56. Five, five, Putting this back in the bag and getting it off the table. I don't want to accidentally shoot a 308 through a 556. And now we will do our 308 unsuppressed. 80. 80.8 88.2 78.6 something I'm figuring out here so the science between the different rifles isn't going to be quite accurate but the science of the sound deadening per rifle will be accurate I'm putting the microphone in the exact same place every time but the muzzle varies in relation based on the rifle this 308 rifle is reporting quieter than a 556 but the muzzle brake was closer to the microphone on the 556 we are now suppressed on the 308. 71.9. 80. 86.4. 80.6. Right, we're going to go ahead and shoot the 6.5 Creedmoor. The first three rounds will be unsuppressed. Uh, in hindsight, for sh wasting nine rounds, I really wish I would have brought cheaper ammo than Hornady Match, but in the name of science. 78.9. Seventy five point six, eighty four even. Now we're going to go suppressed.
100. Ninety-six point three. I don't even know if it's worth changing the end cap considering it was louder suppressed than it was unsuppressed. Seventy eight point nine, eighty two point six, and a final seventy nine point one. So, I want to go over the numbers that we were able to pull using the suppressors. So, I want to go over the data that we pulled shooting these weapons unsuppressed and with suppressors. We'll start with five five six. Unsuppressed, it shot an average of 92.6 decibels. And with the Griffin Armament 556 specific suppressor, it shot 80.9 decibels. So about 11.7 decibels quieter. With the Sandman suppressor, with a 308 end cap, it shot a 75.6 average. With a 6.5 Creedmoor end cap, it shot a 77.7 .7 decibel average. And with a 5.56 in cap, 75.0 decibels average. So regardless of the in cap on the Sandman dead air, it shot four to five decibels quieter than an actual 5.56 suppressor. So I find that a little interesting that a dedicated suppressor was actually not as quiet as a larger caliber suppressor. But if you compare the size of the suppressor, not only is the inner diameter larger, but there's also more baffles and more volume of suppression in the larger suppressor. So if I had a choice now to go back and buy two individual, a $1,000 and an $800 suppressor and $400 in tax stamps, in hindsight now, I would have spent $100 and just added an additional muzzle brake for 5.56 rifles. So no matter what option you went with, there was a reduction in volume. Now for the 6.5 Creedmoor, Unsuppressed, it shot an average of 84.5 decibels with the Dead Air Sandman. I think I keep saying Sandman Dead Air, but it's a Dead Air Sandman S. With a 6.5 Creedmoor cap, somehow our average was actually higher. It shot 93.5 decibels uh, with that one 100 decibel shot in there. But with the 308 cap, it actually shot about 4.5 decibels quieter at an average of 80.2 decibels. For the 308 Winchester, unsuppressed was 82.5 decibels and suppressed was 79.5 decibels average. So with some of this data, like the 6.5 Creedmoor group that we shot suppressed with a 6.5 end cap, with the setup we had and the equipment we had, we're obviously getting some bad data. I cannot explain why the 6.5 Creedmoor was louder utilizing a suppressor, other than bad testing, bad data. Uh, some sort of fault of my own. Generally speaking, overall, every rifle was quieter with a suppressor. So even with bad data, it's in a generally accurate direction. The suppressors are quieter. This sound level meter came with a 4.7 star rating on Amazon. The problem is, out of those people that rated it, how many people had a way to test its accuracy? Uh, Almost all of these shots, except for one, were under 100 decibels, when in reality, I believe a 308 should be close to 150, 160 decibels unsuppressed. So even though our baseline data was low, we still had similar outcome to what we would expect, quieter silent or quieter suppressed rifles. So the next time I do this test, there'll be a larger shooting stand to shoot from so that every shot that goes off, the sound level meter can be in the exact same position. So when I shoot unsuppressed, the distance to the microphone will be the same as shooting suppressed. Currently how we were shooting was the microphone would be there shooting unsuppressed and would be three or four inches further using the suppressor, causing some of the variance. Again, suppressors are suppressors and not silencers. 
So take our 556, for instance, where we only reduced about 11 decibels. We also suppressed muzzle flash. So it's not all about just the decibel reduction, but also the flash suppression and your signature reduction. I will do this test again in the future. I'm also going to go on Amazon and order a much more expensive sound level meter, and we'll compare results to this cheaper one here. So this test wasn't perfect, but we did gather some general information. But there's definitely something to say about the quality of equipment. If any of you have experience with sound level meters and can recommend one with high accuracy or dependability, I'd appreciate that in the comments. Thank you all for watching the video and please feel free to comment below based on your experience.